Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a miniature lecture on cherry eye or Hardarian gland inflammation in the canine. As you can see, this um, dog has two of the lymphoid organs that exist underneath the Hardarian, the, underneath the third eyelid. The dog has a third eyelid. If you push on their eye, the third eyelid rolls up over their eye essentially, and it's a, a mechanism to clear the eye essentially, and that's fine. Underneath that third eyelid is a lymphoid gland, almost like a tonsillar gland, it's called a hardarian gland, and it has some effects for, uh, is there for uh, helping the body take care of infections of the eye, essentially. When it becomes incarcerated because of lack of blood return, what happens is that then starts to swell, and the swelling actually causes more compromise of blood supply, and it'll get large, and very commonly in a lot of animals, like cocker spaniels, it'll become inflamed to the point where it's red, and it'll look like there's a small cherry on the inside of the eye, therefore it's called cherry eye. On veterinary medicine, we have a tendency to call things like that instead of naming it after the practitioner that discovers the disease condition or whatever. So it's called cherry eye, or um, uh, this cardiac gland inflammation. So one of the ways that we treat it is with antibiotic therapy, and if that goes away, that's fine. Sometimes antibiotic and corticosteroid therapy, and that goes away, that's fine. Very commonly, it comes back again, because the underlying problem, and you're, you know what I'm going to tell you, is held in place by a neuronal interference that occurs at the autonomic nervous system input into this area. Again, these animals have huge reading patterns at the lateral occipital area, and inadvertently, when we would treat these animals for a musculoskeletal problem, their cherry eye problem would go away. In the 1980s, when I graduated, essentially, uh, in 79, what we would do is we would go in and remove this gland like you would remove a tonsil. In the late 1980s, early 1990s, the ophthalmologist suggested that that was a bad thing. And so they would remove part of it, essentially, or they would do a rather expensive and extensive t uh, uh, sub-complete removal of that gland and very commonly would recur anyway, and so they'd have to eventually take it out. Now I think that people are taking them out because they really don't see a problem with the conditions associated with that. They were basically suggesting that animals that had problems with dry eye and some other kinds of problems associated with the removal of that particular gland, they thought erroneously that the removal of that gland caused that problem, when actually the underlying cause, neurological interference in the atlanto-occipital area and around the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetics that supply the glands of the head the face was the underlying cause, which would cause cherry eye or it would cause dry eye, or both, essentially. So if we treated the cherry eye with the removal of the gland and the animal got uh, dry eye or some other condition in the eye, essentially, that was due to the fact that we removed it when actually it was being caused by something else that wasn't addressed. Keeping in mind that my profession, the veterinary profession, does not recognize there's neurological interferences in the musculoskeletal system, which was what chiropractic is dedicated to treat, and also in the autonomic nervous system, in this case, the sympathetic and parasympathetic glands that stimulate the face. Also, we see this particular condition occurring in shoved-in face dogs pretty, pretty much commonly, too essentially the bulldog and a number of the other dogs even the um, uh, 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 other dogs that are prone to this atlanto occipital subluxation when we have a cherry eye we always have a demonstrable reading pattern at the atlanto occipital area so what we'll do is we will adjust these animals and then passes one two and three which we'll describe in the vom technology if you go to vomtech.com we'll show you how to do it and why it works. And then we use somatovisceral module 4 actually in the actual uh, certification course shows you extensively how we go about take, treating and uh, balancing the autonomic nervous system in the whole animal's body, both the, parasympath uh, the sympathetics and the parasympathetics essentially of the whole body. It takes seconds to do. It's very easy and very, and very well tolerated by the animal as a solution. Also we can use laser therapy to direct the acute and chronic problems associated with dry eye and we can go in there I beg your pardon. We can go in there and we can address this particular problem with the eye, keeping in mind that we don't necessarily want to shine it into the animal's eye. We can come at it from the side and also we don't necessarily want to produce it. Now, uh, class 4 lasers are not to be used in this capacity. It will make the animal worse. No class 4 lasers or no anything higher than a class 2A laser. This is a 5 milliwatt laser essentially and basically as you can see you can shine it into the eyes although you don't want to have the animal continually peer into the laser because that can theoretically be de detrimental although it's not been clinically seen. So it is safe for us to do the eyes with this laser. No other laser really can really be used. We utilize the old versions of this laser 
in this capacity too, where we'll actually go about uh, treating it with a two-pointed laser approach essentially, and so that can be very effective also, and has been for treating keratitis conjunctiva cica or dry eye, whoops, I'm sorry, for treating uh, this condition of cherry eye essentially in the canine uh, as, a, as opposed to this. And in my practice, we will utilize these approaches, and then if the, the cherry eye goes away, we say, yay, that's great. If it doesn't after a period of two to three weeks and stay gone, essentially, then what we do is we'll remove the gland. And we still then have to treat the underlying cause, which is the atlanto-occipital subluxation phenomenon, and we handle that with that unbalanced dysautonomia we handle with laser and the VOM technology. Understanding this, that this condition is a side effect of the underlying problem that's causing it. Removing of the hardarian gland or the cherry eye essentially surgically is only a temporary fix for this manifestation of the underlying problem. So the underlying problem is the interference of the autonomic nervous system of the actual um, anterior superficial cervical ganglia and its accessory up in the head and the face real close to the atlantocephal area. This has been a lecture on cherry eye and the canine essentially. I'm Dr. Inman and have a great day.